Hello and welcome back to Engineering and Fire. Um, we have some very trashed lab benches here today, but the good news is we're not actually going to be dealing with anything on the lab bench. We're going to be dealing with the stuff underneath the lab bench. This here is my vacuum pump, which has been a workhorse of the lab for many years. I think it's time to finally actually bloody give it some uh, love and care in the form of an oil change. Now I'm gonna pull it out of there in a second, but you can see all around it, there's a big greasy kind of puddle. And that's because it keeps spraying out oil from the exhaust vent, which is this one here. It just over time is a fine mist and that settles down. And because it has such an incredibly low vapor pressure, it just tends to grease up all around here. So it's a bit gross. I bought this, it would have been a couple years ago, just from a guy down the road who was selling it and um, he had filled it full of oil, said it was fresh oil I think. Anyway, he didn't tell me what to replace it with or anything like that, so I've just been using that oil ever since, which is probably not quite good because I do vacuum a lot of kind of harsh things that would inevitably kind of make it through the into the pump. Not too harsh, but you know, like a lot of solvent vapors and stuff like acetone and ethanol would eventually make it into the into the oil. So the oil is probably very, very hideous. So we're going to take it out, and me, in my infinite, inexperienced nature, we're going to try and do an oil change for it, even though I don't really know how to do that in the slightest. Considerably more rusty than when I put it in there. If I compare this to the original video. Here it is, look how good this is. I'm very pleased with this, so I just got to make sure I protect it, and it should last for forever, really. Um, if I keep the, the water out of it and the... Um, out of it. I mean, the, the lab environment, and this is, I, I know this, is, is pretty bad, pretty corrosive. And it was a lot worse back in the day. I'm a lot better at controlling uh, it's HCL vapors in particular. H, HCL uh, vapors in particular are very bad at causing corrosion. So I tend not to leave anything out uh, these days that can do that. But um, a lot of electronics in my lab tends to suffer. Looking at the oil level through this little window here, it, it looks pretty low. I don't actually know where it's meant to be, but I reckon it looks pretty low. It also doesn't look very, very nice, does it? Discolored. I don't. Can't, I think it was always a yellowy colour, but it looks a little bit discoloured. So that's that's no good. I'll, I'll turn it on and, and um, let's have a measure of its vacuum currently. This is a brand new acquisition. I got it. Oh, when did I get it? Yesterday. There was a lab at my university. It was. I think it's an old workshop that was being completely scrapped. They were getting a skip in and they were just throwing out all the scientific equipment because a lot of stuff like, um, so I've got this vacuum gauge here and a couple of the regulators and that sort of thing. The university, they just can't use it if, it if it's been out of service for too long. They don't have the people to fix it and they don't want to fix it because it's a liability issue and they don't have the place to store it while it's getting fixed. So a lot of stuff like this old scientific equipment just gets stitched out. Oh, a centrifuge. That was the other thing I, I picked up. I uh, haven't managed to get that home yet. So the university just let people come in and take it. I think the implication was that you weren't really meant to pick them up to actually use them, especially to use them at home, but they didn't say anything and I didn't say anything. So here it is. Thank you, university, you've scrubbed out your name. You, you don't exist, you're not liable in any sense. It's fine. Anyway, this is a manual vacuum gauge. I don't know if it is accurate. However, it can at least give us a relative reading. So well, you can turn it on here. It should roar to life. That's it, roaring to, oh, I haven't plugged the power board in. Fuck, all right, we'll do that. Now when I flick the switch, look at it, fucking roaring to life. All right, so that's it, that's atmosphere. These days you can get the same sort of equipment, but all digital gauges, which is fine, but also I like the look of this, you know, it's pretty cool. Um, we'll put this probe here in um, this opening here. This is less than optimal, but I can blame uh, myself from two years ago. There's no one more idiotic than yourself from two years ago. Force that in a bit more with two hands. So that's in there pretty bloody snugly. And so we've got bleed valve up here too. Well, we'll flip this on. This all rotates. So this motor drives a belt, uh, which, you know, pulls a vacuum. I can't pretend to claim that I know how all this stuff works very well just because I use it. Um, that's not really my specialty. That's fine. Anyway, point is, the probe's in there. All right, we can see the gauge in the background there. I close the bleed valve. And we're getting out to about one tor, which is one millimeter of mercury, as it helpfully points out down the bottom there. All right. 
right, who wants to guess where the oil drain thing is? I have a receptacle to drain some oil in, LA Ice Cola, the drink of kings. Um, what do we reckon? What's a good guess? I reckon that looks like a drain. How about I undo that fucking thing? I mean, that's a bolt. I'll fucking undo that. This is 50 years old. I'm, I'm not going to be able to find a manual for this. Oh, it's fine. Hold on. Maybe I'll fucking... Maybe the instructions are on the thing. Refer to the full insulation working instructions. Blah, blah, blah. Use only Edwards high vacuum pump oil. All right, we're zero from two so far. To fill pump, unscrew plug in lid and fill to oil level indicated on sight glass. What's... <laughs> I don't even know what the indicator level, maybe it's the middle? Fuck, all right. Pump pulley should rotate clockwise at a speed of that, sure. Drain oil, there we go, number five. To drain oil, unscrew plug from lower side spout on lid. That must be that fucking thing. Seal pump exhaust nozzle with finger, sure. And rotate pump pulley slowly clockwise by hand until oil is expelled. All right, I think I kinda got it, I kinda got it. Fuck, the screwdriver's too fucking long. Ah, fuck. Delicious. All right, now I have to rotate the pulley by hand clockwise. Do you reckon it's an Australian or an American clock? How the fuck do I do that? I must have to take this back bit off. Ah, frustrating. Another screwdriver. My god, it's greasy. Beautiful. And by beautiful, I mean fucking greasy. At least the belt looks mostly okay. It is pretty disgusting. Look at this down here. Yeah, that's that's filthy. Holy shit. Um, speaking of disgusting, I bought the latex free gloves by accident and I hate them. I hate that you can still see my hands through the gloves. That's real bad. Looks like I'm gonna be churning through the gloves in this project um, because, uh, yes, as soon as I touch something like this, I'm gonna throw it out because that is my god, it's greasy. Look at those lumps. Shit. We'll clean up the back of it all later, but for now, let's see if we can at least uh, flush the oil out. At least get the oil out in the first place. So I have to rotate it clockwise. All right, that's this way. Or is that any clockwise? It's clockwise depending on which side of the bloody... All right, this way. No, what about this way? One of these ways, I feel like I'm gonna break it. Ah, I forgot the part where I have to seal the exhaust nozzle with my finger. So let's try that and do this and then do this. Right, let's try it this way. Ah, oh, fuck me. That's erotic and disgusting. Holy shit, this oil is... To say it was bad would be putting it lightly. <laughs> this probably has every single carcinogen known to man inside it at this point. In saying that, at this point it does look kind of delicious. It's like... A caramel sauce fountain, or uh, yeah, you know, it's got a real kind of toffee, kind of, like I'd put this on my ice cream, honestly. Like I, I want to put a bowl of ice cream underneath here and underneath this vacuum pump and just enjoy some low vapor pressure toppings. Oh, what is that? That's, this is bad. It should not be chunky. How is this pump? put up with me. I think it just threw up a little. 
Come on, release your burdens. Oh, fuck me. This is sickening to watch, honestly. Alright, that fucking scared me shitless, but I think the caramel sauce is out. But we are going to have to flush the fuck out of this. Holy shit, look at this is quite So I, I think the next step is now to flush oil through, but having a look at the oil. Um I'm, I'm really keen to actually open up the chamber a bit more. So that's these four bolts, uh, uh, six bolts, I'm assuming, six hex bolts. So I might just unscrew them. Let's have a look. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? I render this thing completely inoperable. That's the worst that can happen. So we'll try and avoid that. But apart from that, let's just have a look what's there. All right, so I can't exactly access the oil cavity in there because this bit only slides up like to here but at least if it stay, wants to stay there for the moment we can at least have a look in here the light you can see it's you could do it with a clean honestly that's my that's my feeling here because this won't bit won't get cleaned when we flush the oil through so at least if I can run some paper towels through this bit at least because uh, there's a lot of just genuine grime there So I've been stressing a bit about which oil to put in the pump because I have no idea which oil was initially in the pump and uh, the oil that it wants me to get in the manual is like some ultra pure vacuum grade, you know, thing that I can only get in England and is just ludicrously expensive. I like asked the science mandus forums, we had a bit of a, a chat about which oil to get. I think the consensus was it doesn't really matter as long as the oil doesn't have too many additives to it and is a low enough vapor pressure. So a lot of synthetic oils these days, like used in cars and that sort of thing, have a lot of like zinc and stuff added. So as long as it's relatively clean, just look at the MSDS. Um, it should be all right. So what I've ended up with is actually just an oil that I've had lying around here. Well, when I say I, I mean, this is not my part of the shed, obviously. This is my dad's part of the shed, which is why it's just trashed. But um, he has some of this oil. I think this goes in my car because my car's, you know, a bit shitty. But um, <laughs> here we go. Use in hoist machine tools, vacuum pumps, and wide range of off-highway equipment. So I, I think this oil would be ideal. I mean, as long as it doesn't have any those weird additives in it, it won't actually do any damage to the pump. It's just if it is a bit more volatile than what we're used to, we won't be able to pull as good a vacuum because the limit of the vacuum pump is set by the vapor pressure of the oil. So if the vapor pressure is slightly higher, the, the vacuum pump will operate as normal. You just won't get as good a vacuum out of it. So I've done one flush and I got a bit of stuff out, but my concern is that there's a whole lot of solid shit down the bottom. That's just, um, you know, when we top up the oil and suck off the oil off the top again, it's not getting all that real crud at the bottom. So we're gonna do something somewhat risky. I've filled it up kind of half full of oil and uh, I'm just gonna flick it on for like just a couple of seconds. It should churn all the oil up. That way that when, when we suck all the oil out again, hopefully it's got all the, like the solid and all the shit from the bottom a little bit better than if we just take the oil off now. So I had to put this plug back in. Two, one. Yeah, 
So it's not looking awful this time. So what I might do is I might put it, fill it full of oil and just use it routinely for the next couple of weeks and then in a couple of weeks time I'll drain it and then put a new bit of oil in there again. So we can turn our attention to the rest of the pump because it's filthy. So I really should clean up all this oil that's around the back and everything like that. I'm also gonna replace this O-ring because this O-ring is pretty bloody boned. I've got one that looks like pretty much the right size so that'll be good too that'll help it out all right I put the back enclosure on and it's filled full of oil we know the oil is still a little bit shit but I think that's where it's meant to be roughly halfway up the sight glass uh, let's turn it on and see what kind of vacuum we're getting out of it now with this different new oil in it And that is a sh shocking number. That's not very good at all, is it? No, that's not very good. No, I, actually, I, I got it wrong. Uh, I tightened this a bit better. I put a better O-ring on it, and I tightened this, and, and this was a, bit, a little bit loose, but mainly this one here was all the way unlocked because I was trying to uh, get this top off here. And we close the bleed valve. Look at that. That's heaps better. It's even better than what we're getting before. It's now at... You know, half a tour there, pulling it down slowly, even a little bit more. You can hear by the way it runs that this is really where it's meant to be running, you know. It's meant to kind of be a roughing pump. And if we read the front of the, the pump again, we see that it can produce 0.005 millimeters mercury without air ballast or half a millimeter mercury with full air ballast flow. I don't really know what full air ballast flow means, but I assume that's what we have and uh, that half a millimeter mercury is the maximum the pump can really pull, and that's what we're seeing here. So, so that's uh, that's great. We're um, sitting at exactly what the pump says it should be getting back underneath the table now. I reckon that's uh, all clean and happy.